I'm Matt Noble from Gold Derby here with Jack Black, who plays Bowser in the Super Mario Brothers movie. He also co-wrote and performed the hit song Peaches for the film. I want to kick things off, Jack, by well, maybe reminding you in 2004, when you presented the best song Oscar with Will Ferrell, Will said that there's no greater weapon in a director's arsenal than a strategically placed song. So when we come to Peaches, uh, what power did that song bring to the Super Mario Brothers movie? Well, at the risk of sounding uh, immodest, um, it was a it was a powerful tool indeed for Super Mario Brothers because uh, you know you've got this great story with this hero Mario and this horrible villain Bowser, and the last thing you expect is for Bowser to sing a heartfelt love song with aching pain that he'll never. He'll never be united with his true love, you know, and uh, and I think it's one of the surprises and one of the best parts of the movie. But uh, yeah, I can't take all the credit. There, there was some great creatives, great creative minds that that popped up to to think of that idea. I can't, I can't. Uh, I wish it was all my idea, but the director said, "Hey." How would you feel about singing a song? And, I, and at first I was like, hey, pop, 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 guys. Uh, I uh, only signed up to do a, a villainous voice. You never said anything about about singing a song when we made this deal. And they were like, yeah, well, you want to check out what we got so far? And I was like, send it over. And I listened to this little nugget. They had like a 20-second a nugget idea for a song. And uh, I had to admit it was funny. I was like, oh, I get it. That would be funny if if Bowser sang this sweet love song. And so I developed it. I, I, I added some music and, and lyrics and, and, and then when we were done with it, I, I, uh, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to use this song because it's so heartfelt. It's it, it actually, get, it gets a little too real. That love, you can hear the love in his voice. And I thought, oh, it'll be interesting to see what they say. And I sent it over and they loved it. And I was like, oh, my God, they're going to really put it in the movie. And uh, it's funny how those things that sometimes it's like, I don't know if this is going to work, ends up being some of the best stuff in a movie. Because uh, I think people like it when you take risks and you push the envelope and you do some some weird stuff that no one's, no one's uh, expecting. Yeah. And, like, I guess you've got, like, on one hand, this song adds – real heart to Bowser, a character that's usually like just nothing but villain. Uh, but there's also like something like ridiculously silly about seeing this menacing figure at a piano pouring out his heart. Um, like how did you balance the comedy and the heart in this song? Well, in the, in the movie, I'm really just always trying to, to, to make the scariest choices and the realest anger and make him uh, this fire breathing dragon of just petty jealousy and hunger for power and control and just the most awful kind of creature. And, uh, but at, at the core, there's this kind of like lonely child who just wants love and didn't never got the love that he wanted and felt like he deserved and, and and so yeah, there there is at the core of all the the despicable villains is this need that w felt like it was perfect to sing a song like that. Of course, that's what's happening beneath the surface of someone who's so e so so despicable is that they're feeling pain and loss. They're human. Did how did 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 the song change the way you saw Bowser as a character? Um, it was a, it was a way to express what was happening inside of Bowser, but, uh, it was cool to, to bust out a jam because I am aware of how powerful music can be in a movie mm -hmm. and the movie didn't have a song. It had a great score, but it didn't have a song to, to, uh, to buoy it and, uh, 
sort of stick a flagpole in the center of it. And, uh, you know, I'm no stranger to that, that, uh, that tool. School of Rock, all of my best movies have some kind of musical element in them and, and a couple good jams, a couple good songs go a long way. Um, and when you look at the other hits of the year, you know, Barbie, those songs in Barbie are so fantastic and, and take it to another level. You can take a good movie and make it a great movie. You can take it to a stratosphere. If you kick out the jams hard enough, you can make it classic. Yeah. And like, what do you think it is the power of music in movies? I think music hits different. It hits on another level. It gets you in the gut, in the, in the emotional heart. It bypasses, you know, language and everything and goes to, to something primal. I don't know. It's, it's something I can't even describe. Mm. But uh, it, from from when we're very young, we we uh, we are. There's something in the human uh, mind and heart and soul that responds to music. And I th- I think you're right, and I think there's that like you know great power that music brings to movies, but also like the thing that often in your work with School of Rock, Tenacious D, now the Super Mario Brothers movie, that great blend of music and comedy. How do you think music and comedy can serve each other? Well, you know, it's uh, been very, very good to me, yes. that combo. Uh, and when I look at my my biggest influences and my favorite artists, there's a lot of that. Uh, Spinal Tap is the greatest example of, of rock comedy of all time. Mm-hmm. I love Flight of the Concords. Those guys are geniuses, and I'm very jealous of them because they're similar to Tenacious D, two guys playing acoustic instruments and and being funny, and they're just a little bit smarter and a little bit better looking than Tenacious D. So I've always felt like we were in their, in their fume trails, but we did get to uh, jam together. One time they were so gracious to take part in our music comedy festival that we did years ago called Festival Supreme. And they came and headlined the festival and just blew the roof off the joint. Love those guys. Yeah. Uh, my favorite uh, comedy uh, uh, on Broadway was uh, Book of Mormon. Oh. Just an incredibly funny uh, collection of songs by the geniuses behind South Park. And uh, what other great comedy? Oh, there's just so many great ones that I... That I uh, that I admire, uh, the, the lonely Island from Saturday night live. They had that incredible rap, um, lazy Sunday, the chronic, what calls of Narnia? Uh, yeah, the list goes on and on. Well, you got any, like, any, any I'm missing. Who else am I missing in, in the comedy music world? Like you got Steve Martin with his banjo. I feel like, um, like, um, that that's the one that comes to mind. I would have said Flight of the Concords. Um, yeah, Adam like, Sandler, of course. Adam Sandler. Yeah, I think with like, is it hard to like? Because we've just gone through a bunch, and you you've gone through most of them. Bunch of examples of like how well it works when it works. But is it hard to get it right? Is it hard to like get comedy music right, Jack? Well, you know. Uh, that 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 brings up the question is is comedy hard and uh the answer is it's not hard for the people that uh that are great at it it seems like that it's it's part of their nature they for some innate they have some ability to to make people laugh and maybe they don't even know why but uh i think uh it takes work just like anything else you know you you put in your 10,000 hours and you can become a master but you got to be willing to do it and you're only willing to do that much time and effort if you love to do it. If you really love to get up and make people laugh, then you will put in the time and you will get better at it. But yeah, what is it about music and comedy, that 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 magical thing? You know what I think it is? It's got to start with the concept. Like some music you can say, nah, I got this 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 juicy riff. This is, riff is so fun to play. I like the sound of this song. I've just got to think of some funny lyrics to put on top of it. I don't think that's the way the best stuff comes with comedy music. You come up with that kernel, that concept, that funny idea first, and then you build the song around that. And what was that kernel, that concept, that funny idea for Peaches that you think lay the foundation well, for the song? 
I, to be honest, I didn't come up with that yes. kernel. That came from yeah. from the creatives in 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 Illumination. Mm. They uh, they sent over this little this little nugget. Yeah, that was uh, basically, you know, <laughs> Bowser just sitting at the piano, singing about how much he loves Prince Princess Peach, and uh, and how much he longs to 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 be with her. And to rule the the universe together, uh, and he also knows in his heart that she, she, it's not reciprocated, you know, that they, and, and uh, so there's a pain and a longing there, and just the fact that it's coming from him, this gentle, sweet song, is so funny and incongruous w- with what we've seen from him leading up to that. He's this fire breathing heavy metal monster. That's just so rude and crude and filled with poison bile. And to hear him sing that song was was amazing. Mm. But he has a heart just like us. What he's got a tender side. What why do you think, Jack, this song became such a hit? Like because it became viral, it broke into the billboard, top one hundred. What do you think about this resonated with people? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what it was that that uh, that got in people's heads. Um, I think people just like a love song because out of the context of the movie, when you don't know what what a bastard Bowser is, that joke doesn't really hit when it's just the song in and of itself. I think people like just got caught up with the the earworm it's it's a it's a catchy little jam oh yeah it's a catchy little tune got it it got its hooks in people and then the, then they couldn't stop thinking about it got stuck in their heads that's uh that's the magic of a hit when you can when you can get that hook they call it a hook for a reason mm. and do you think jack like so jack like you mentioned school of rock you've done like i think is it 20 years since the school of rock came out like that's wild um when you when you were saying um before that sometimes the the best ideas or ideas that you don't think are going to work or whatever what was something that you didn't think was going to work about that film that ended up working well i was terrified of that film because uh it was about rock and roll and it's like i was already doing tenacious d at the time i was like i actually am a musician and uh I don't, I, you couldn't call me a rock star at the time but we had good momentum we were playing good good houses and we had a good rep and uh and i was like this might hurt my musical career to to play a, a rocker in, in, and i'm also in reality trying to be a rocker i don't know i was just filled with all kinds of worries and also i was like i've never done anything you know, I've never had a, a movie where I act opposite kids before. Yeah. And it's like, you you know, the Tenacious D um, uh, brand is pretty, is, is pretty R rated. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know if, if my uh, brand is going to go well with, you know, a bunch of kids in a school. It's like, oh, th- this might not be right. And then, uh, uh, yeah. So those were my fears and things that I thought, might not work me me working with kids and me uh just doing anything about music but at the end of the day the writing was so good and i had to admit i was just afraid not because not because i didn't like the material but because i was and it's something i struggle with all through my life it's like wait a second am i not doing this because i i don't like it or am i not doing this because i'm afraid that i'll fail and uh the lesson I've learned is if it's because I'm afraid I'm going to fail, but I do like the material in any way, the best thing is to just do it. Just jump in. Hmm. I'd imagine fear is like a big, like sort of hurdle for anyone in comedy, like having yeah. to, you know, you're really putting yourself out there by putting a joke out into the world that might not be well received. Yeah. Oh my God. It's terrifying. Yeah. The idea of going out in front of a crowd of people and have them judge you, it can kick off like a real fight or flight response. 
I, to this day, if I'm being honest, every time I have to go out in front of a crowd, I have a feeling, a, a, a feeling of dread, like it's going to go badly. They're not going to like me. And I have to take a call, just talk myself off the ledge. Yeah. You no, know, it's possible that it will go well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just have to breathe. And a weird, this is a little bit of advice for anyone who has stage fright uh, and, and uh, is, uh, is to remember to, this is going to sound like bad advice, but to phone it in a little bit. Because I feel like when I get nervous, I get tight. And when I get tight, I try a little too hard. Yeah. And then it's not fun and it's not as good. And the only way to relax is to go, ah, screw it. Let's just, yeah. let's just phone it in a little bit. Let's just, let's not try. Yeah. Do you know, anyway, yeah. everyone's different. That's what works for me. Mm. No, that's helpful. Um, like Jack, when I, th- do you know what I think of when I think of Jack Black and the Oscars? What mm. word comes to mind? Um, me and the Oscars. Yeah. What word do you think comes to mind to me? Well, I, I think of the one that you said right at the very beginning, Will yeah. Ferrell, because <laughs> me and Will Ferrell at the Oscars, when we were presenting for the best song, yeah, that was one of my core memories. Now, one of my favorite memories in life, because talk about stage fright, dude, <laughs> right before we went on there, I was like, my heart was beating a uh, 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 hundred. It was just, it was like a hummingbird heartbeat. And I looked over at Will and he was just still and quiet and just, and so meditative. And I was like, I'm not going to bother him. And, uh, and we went out there because in your head, you're thinking, I think there's a billion people watching all over the world right now. This is the biggest audience yeah. that we'll ever be in front of. And we had this bit that I knew was funny. It was a song about being played off. It was the, it was the music that they play yeah. when you've gone on too long and they want to get you off the stage. And we added lyrics to it. And it, it was a very funny bit, but just finding that like little peace, that little relaxation in the eye of the hurricane. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. And, and, um, and we went out there and it was really and it's a great camp at night for you can't control how they do this, but there's a great shot um, of while you're performing Sean Connery, just laughing so hard at that <laughs> bit. And that must be so cool to like have that. That is the best. Um, That's the other thing is you're in front of your yeah. peers. You're yeah. in front of your heroes. It's not yeah. just any audience out yeah. there that you can go, oh, well, we'll never see them again. Yeah. But uh, uh, we didn't win an Oscar that night, but I felt yeah. like we did. I felt like what what we got out of that was just as good. Well, that brings me to the, the word I was going to say, Jack, and I've written it down here. I was going to say generous because – You've never been nominated for an Oscar before. No. Uh, you've never, you've never nominated, let alone won. But you've provided some of the funniest, most fun moments at Oscar telecast. From that to, I love when you and Will returned and sang uh, about how comedic performances never get recognised at the Oscars, and you need to go dramatic. That was, I thought, amazing. And uh, you also uh, joined Neil Patrick Harris on stage when he was hosting and had a, had a sort of musical rant too. So you've given these great musical moments to the Oscars, <laughs> but you've never won or been nominated for one. So I think you're very generous with the yeah. Academy, Jack. Yeah, well, you know, at, at, uh, at the end of the day, I'm just a huge fan. And I, I love cinema, I love watching movies and all of the great artists who have contributed to cinema over the years. I, and I, I get it. The clowns don't get the prizes and that's okay. I like to just be part of, part of, the, uh, part of the amazing craft of filmmaking. Well, if you could give any clown or comedic performance an Oscar from the past, which, which one would you, would you chuck it to? Man, there's been so many great ones. Which one, which one like transcends? I mean, the one that comes to mind is just because we're talking about him right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Will Ferrell and Elf is, yeah. is definitely in, in my uh, top 10 
film performances of all time in any genre, yeah. you know, comedy, drama, or anything. I, I think I'd hand it to Will. Love it. He's uh Love he's it. my hero. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's a good one. Um, what um, and Jack. Although, yeah, just oh, for yeah. straight up funniest funniest yeah. comedy of all time. I think it's got to be Step Brothers. Mm. You ever check out Step Brothers? Yes, I saw that in LA once. Will oh, Ferrell was... and John C. Riley huh. cracked open the universe and made me laugh harder than I think I ever have in a movie theater. The two guys you sang with about the Oscars yeah. gonna gonna compete. That's awesome at the Oscars. Um, That's I right. think you know for me like, and this could be a really just left field random one that one, and I, probably because I mentioned him earlier, Steve Martin in The Man with Two yeah. Brains. I just love. Oh that. wait. Sorry to sorry to interrupt you, yep. but also on the subject of uh, yeah. Step Brothers, also a great a great song at the end of that one. Yes, at the Catalina Mixer, Whoa. Boats and Hose. Whoa, there you go. What would that movie be without Boats and Hose? Okay, sorry, Steve Martin in in the Man with the Two man Brains. With two brains. I just always it just always gets yeah. me that one. It's just such a silly. You'd never get an Oscar <laughs> for that. Like, but I was like, yeah, Jack, he's a genius. We're gonna obviously you in school of rock as well. I did like, but <laughs> but uh, Pee Wee Herman's first movie, uh, Jack. that was a masterpiece, yeah. With Jack. Tim Burton, yeah. What would it mean? We're gonna finish off with this. What would it mean for Peaches to be a song that gets you your first Oscar nomination? Oh my god. It, it would mean, uh, well, uh, it would mean I'd have to go up and make a speech. And that, you talk about uh, stage fright. I, I hope I don't win, because then I'll have to go up there and talk yeah. like an idiot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. It is just a, it is just a, a funny, funny little song and a, and a funny little movie. But, uh yeah, it, it uh, hey, never say never. You never know. We'll see. Yeah, and just take it one step at a time. First, you can get the nomination. That'll be good. <laughs> don't need to do a speech that for that. That would be great. That Don't need to do a speech for that. Then once you get the nomination, you can start thinking about <laughs> what if I win. And like, Correct. That, that exactly. Can be, that can be the next fear for you to overcome. Those are that's career. how you do it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Jack, it's a great song and it's a fun film. And thank, thank you. you so much for talking with us today about comedy, music, and peaches. Hey, I want to thank you for putting some peaches in the background there next to your in and out cup. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Juicy. Ooh, juicy. There you go. That juicy one's in peaches. season. Oh, my God. I just gleeked a little bit watching mm. you eat that peach. You got a Nintendo 64 back there, or is that a GameCube? <laughs> No, it's a Nintendo 64 nice. chat. That's my old one. Dude, back you got great stuff. You got great backgrounds, bro. I see you got the movie awards, the Oscars, yep. the Golden Globes. Very apropos. No art. Love your you great know. background work. Some thought goes into it. Some thought goes into it. Where are uh, you? Where are you exactly in the world? I'm in uh, Sydney. Ah, uh, the best. Sydney, yeah. Australia. Love it. Love it. And oh, I'm Jack. I'd love to come visit soon. Oh, it'd be great to see you. Um, people watching this interview, you can go to goldderby.com. Jack, all the best of luck with the Oscars for Peaches. And thanks so much for chatting. This was so much fun. My pleasure. Thank you. Look, look forward to crossing paths again soon. Yeah. See ya. Peace out, my brother. Mm -hmm.